so it's currently the month of November and as of now I wanted to make this video to talk about upcoming video ideas along with the discussion about long-form commentary videos whether it's just me talking about anything on my own or any sort of collaboration podcasts or interview style videos whatever you want to call them throughout this video alongside the mention of more commentary videos I will bring up games I I've played in the past and of course made content on. So to suffice, it's not just about the idea of wanting to make more commentary videos to balance things out with the gaming videos I have on my channel, but I will dive into some history on games I've played as well. To start off, to feature gaming videos, this one has to be the one of or if not the most casual style of video formats out there. And for myself, I do admit I am picky on deciding which games catch my interest, but that's not to say I was not open to RPG style video games for example. To take a look at The First Descendant, a game that does feature RPG-like elements along with open world gameplay for a good amount of time from the first Descendants beta tests and fast forward to the game's official release. I did enjoy playing the game again because it was a long wait after all and it gave me a chance to experience open world gameplay once again. To enjoy open world games and its respective mechanics, I do understand it's different from the linear game format which gives you certain choices and a path you have to follow in order to reach the end. Whereas with open world games, there's the benefit of having no limitations after completing certain things at the start of a game. The first Descendants official launch and playing the game just about every day when I got the chance, it's obvious that I finally got the hang of the game and it was great to always have something to do because of how the game operates but the most predictable statement I'm going to bring up is how it takes time to upgrade characters and weapons. Yes, I understand it's the norm in the game but as time went by things fell repetitive with nothing else to do other than to repeat a long process. This led to the impression that there wasn't anything else to do and even with the hopes I brought up before in some videos of the possibility of future updates that could bring in new fields and go beyond the borders of the current map. It was on September 15th where I finally called it quits on that game because as I said, the idea of new fields unfortunately was a long wait. Thus, I made the choice to quit the game. But it's important that I have to bring this golden point up. No, that does not mean I am disrespecting anyone who still enjoys the game, or any points people will bring up in support of the game, or the genres that make up the game. If you still enjoy the game, that's fine. The First Descendant isn't going to be the only game brought up in this video. I have uploaded videos featuring games such as Titanfall, Titanfall 2, the Halo games, Helldivers 2, Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon, Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, Starship Troopers, Extermination, SCP-5K, Boundary, Ace Combat 7, Project Wingman, and Ironsight. All of these games have their way of executing video game formats. Whatever you can do in one game can be different in another game. Many will argue all of those games I've brought up have their pros and cons. I agree. And the hopes of any of those games adding in more content, yes, it's always been in my mind as well, where I would think, when will this game add this? or that. For example, when it came to Starship Troopers Extermination, I had this silly thought of not only more maps, but I also thought about the possibility of any vehicles we could utilize. And yes, there were some changes in the game I did not agree with, but that did not stop me from enjoying the game and coming back to it last month for a bit to experience the changes and additions to the game. Now, for Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. This one, similar to my experience with Project Wingman, 
I enjoyed these two games, even though the experience revolved around a single player experience. But even though that was the case, I did not look at the game in a negative perspective. I have kept trying to go through the campaign of Armored Core 6 many times and returning to many of the missions as well. And my favorite mission of Armored Core 6 is Breach the Carmen Line, a mission I really enjoyed because it gave me an open world kind of experience experience, being able to fly around to take out enemies above the planet and ending it off with a boss fight against Rusty. And just like with a lot of games with lore, I enjoyed learning about what was going on in the conflict on the planet, along with learning about the anomaly on the planet. And let me tell you, when it comes to video games bringing up the mention of anomalies, that's the one thing I find interesting. My experience with SCP-5K, while it was another game I treated as a short-lived experience, I did enjoy the game for what it offered, while not much in the player versus player aspect, I did enjoy the Area 12 campaign, learning to solve certain puzzles and navigating around the facility. It was a very back and forth experience because in a lot of situations, you had to locate codes to unlock doors while fighting through anomalies. D-Class, and Site Security. SCP-5K just so happens to be another one of those games where I chose to tag along with other people. So with that being said, at one point, I did return to the game just to see what was added, and during that time, the Area 12 campaign ended with going down to the lowest area of a vast room where SCP-1262 took over which was very different in comparison to how the campaign originally ended with just going up a lift, returning to the surface. For video games such as Boundary, Ironsight, Ace Combat 7, and Project Wingman, I enjoyed these games despite the fact these games revolved around a more straight to the point style of gameplay. Project Wingman, for example, a single player game I enjoyed, made lots of videos, on and even came back to the game more than three times. When it came to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, I did not make much content on that game but came back to it after a certain amount of months. I once again found myself learning the many mechanics that make up the game and anything new that was added over the years, I quit. When I came back in 2023, while I still held onto my opinion of not enjoying competitive mode, I understood my own faults of being really bad at the game prior to 2023. So whenever I found myself playing casual mode, I ultimately decided to give competitive mode another shot. But I wasn't surprised I was subjected to the many stereotypical problems surrounding the said game mode. But similar to every game, once you get the hang of it, you start to understand how you could hold your own weight along with being a good teammate. But what about any lost hopes that dropped into your mind when playing the game? The first thing I learned was the absence of my favorite map, Cash. As I said before, it's my favorite map of the game, and during the time from 2015 to 2019, it was a map where I invested in a lot of time just to understand just about everything about it. Whether it was the callouts, any tricks you could do to jump onto certain ledges, and it was a map I shared lots of great moments with the teammates that came and went. I actually have a commentary video where I spoke about my experiences during those years of playing Counter-Strike Global Offensive and some things I've had to say about the game today. As for upcoming games, I've mentioned a lot that I have some games set in sight but not limited to Mecha Break and Beautiful Light. The many gaming videos you find on my channel, while it's easier to do because not only is it one of the many casual things anyone can do at any time, however, to go into something that requires a degree of effort, aka commentary videos for example, there are many ways to execute this idea. So to start with individual projects, 
Similar to just recording gameplay, this can be done at any time I want without waiting on others to do their part. However, when I think of commentary videos, I came to the realization if I wanted to record a video where I have to include voice chat with others, I end up with in a multiplayer match. I consider that to be a commentary video because teamwork does involve communication, but here's a differentiation, if you will. I was talking about going into a game on my own, which meant I had the freedom to decide when I wanted to play a video game and when to call it quits. While the opposite where I would have at least one person tagging along prior to going into a multiplayer match. Sometimes these can be on the spot things where they will message me and we would arrange a time to meet up for a game we wanted to play. So this is where finding teammates can be a drawback because respectfully speaking, the first thing that comes to mind and into a conflict, if you will, that's where I would understand the back and forth points about it. In the past, and no, I'm not pointing out anybody in a negative way at all, I found it was difficult to stay with others for more than three matches. The games I've mentioned earlier, such as Titanfall 2 and the Halo games, it wasn't uncommon where I wanted to take a break. And of course, sometimes wanting to come back afterwards, or even call it off for the day, which can be struck as a surprise to some I frequently played multiplayer with. To look back on the possibility where I could have taken a break and come back, yes, there were examples where I wanted to go eat dinner, then come back, but these scenarios would be the one time I agreed where you are affecting others because those who queued up with me now have to wait on me to return. So that's the explanation as to why I did choose to play games, if not multiplayer games, on my own. But if I wanted to have people tag along, I always reminded myself I had to draw a line somewhere because again, I did notice, respectfully speaking, most of the time people had the thought of sticking around for five or more rounds of a video game, if not longer depending on what we wanted to do. For example, if we were playing 4v4 or big team battle in one of the Halo games, there's your explanation as to why I did not want to stick around for many hours. But this isn't a recent thing. It's always been that way because in a lot of game modes, depending on what we are talking about, there's no way I would enjoy lots of big team battle matches without taking a break. Right? To continue on the topic of commentary videos, and this time I'm not talking about video games, but this is an idea I tried to execute a while ago. And even today, I'm still trying to find the time and plan things out properly because at one point I did try this idea of bringing in viewers during a live stream, but the execution was very on the spot. After all, there are many factors similar to the idea of multiplayer. There's things such as time zone differences. So to bring anyone in, the first thing I even wanted to accommodate would be the time zone differences because I did realize even if somebody was one hour behind or one hour ahead is a major difference and will affect whatever I have planned. To plan an interview, step one would be easy enough. It's to decide who I want to bring along for the show. But if an offer was accepted, similar to the possibility of someone declining the offer, would have to be any disagreements. Because when I planned out the length of an interview, I had to think Think, okay, how long should the interview be? After all, I do understand it would be boring if it was only questions and answers with no time to just have those moments to hang out and talk. So the latter was to allow that, but at the same time, I wanted to be accommodating to whoever I was interviewing. Thus, I did have this idea to make the interview around one hour because I have this perspective on interviews and for something very casual, even I knew it could be excessive to drag things out for more than one hour because that would take up 
more of someone else's day. If I ever wanted to make interview style videos revolving around the sole idea of just asking questions, what I mentioned before about time zones is very important, but here's the spoiler on what I wanted to do when it came to interviews. I had this idea I would interview those who do visual art. So anyone that you see that does drawings or even 3D renders in programs such as Source Filmmaker or Blender. However, to respect a lot of artists that I try to bring on board for these interviews, I'm not gonna say any names, but I'm gonna bring up points I've learned from the responses I've gotten. So an obstacle I had to deal with that served as the number one reason is there's no spare time for whoever I'm trying to arrange an interview with. After all, respectfully speaking, you have some artists who have jobs outside of creating drawings or renders. Thus, they need the spare time to cool off. That's fine. But the one differentiation that separates some artists from others is the fact that drawing or even creating 3D renders is their full-time job which is cool. I also learned the following from looking around, observing the average process of drawing. What usually happens involves the artist choosing a certain time of the year, such as one to three months. And within that period of time, they will have spots from three to five or more customers. And here's an important thing to note. Some artists may or may not work on more than one piece of art at a time. Some prefer solely to work on one before the next. And depending on the artist we are talking about, that one artist may or may not allow revisions after certain steps. But there are those who are very busy, where after deciding to open up spots for commissions, they will take as much customers as they can. Not necessarily finishing lots within a certain amount of time, but it could mean they are okay with putting your name on a spreadsheet so they remember you are lined up for a commission spot. Thus, they will not forget you. There's also the art styles that contribute to how drawings can take a lot of time to finish. Many art styles involve a lot of steps, even something with less detail, such as a colored sketch with shading. It can take three days, for example, to ensure everything is done. Just look around as many artists as you can, and you will see some styles are more in depth in detail than others. Some will appear different and it also depends on the scene building as well. So if you wanted to draw an interior of a large shopping mall, for example, but utilize only the style of simple colors with no shading, that piece of work will take more time because you have to draw out a lot of details for that one scene. While on the other hand, if it's something such as a render in Source Filmmaker, it's about the same thing, but it could take less time depending on what you are asking for because you are not drawing out a model from scratch. Then there's the back and forth phases where upon showing a preview, the customer may or may not agree on what's been done, thus the artist has to do one or more revisions. To provide an example of how many steps the customer and artist have to go through, I will provide on screen one artwork I commissioned, I contacted the artist ManZQR, sorry if I butchered that pronunciation. This was the second time I contacted him for a commission to be done. So after reserving my spot, the second step was to explain all the things he would ask for one artwork. So this is where I would provide the reference images and explanations for everything. So to start, it begins with the background details which was a large shopping mall with an empty parking lot. This step basically summed up how much I would want the quote-unquote camera to show of the scene, which was a wide shot. I gave the reference images and details for the characters and cars I wanted to feature in the scene. Essex from Ezra Lane with 
a yellow Camaro SS, an executioner from Girls Frontline with a red WRX STI. Both characters wearing casual clothing, whereas both cars had carbon fiber hoods, along with other details such as car decals and emblem changes, tinted door windows, and a sunstrip on the windshields. Then fast forward from many days of silence because he had to work on another art piece, my commission resumed progress on September 21st, analyzing how the cars and characters will pose in the scene through the method of a rough draft showing the models placed in the preview. Once the details have been finalized, the sketch phase began on September 22nd and fast forward to September 29th is when I received the first sketch preview and from there until October 6th I got a preview of the final work and during this step I ensured one detail was fixed which was the lemon lime logo because the one I sent was the old one which wasn't spaced properly so he was nice enough to change it from there despite the fact that we were already in the final stages where everything was done but remember it depends on the artist we are talking about so when I find the time and if an artist agrees to an interview I will have to arrange time we can agree on and if anyone has noticed something about this video it's the sound quality if it makes any difference at all I purchased a pop filter for my HyperX microphone. I also wanted to bring up a point. It's something I've said before, but if anyone doesn't know why I chose to stick with a more simple format of using images more than videos in the background in commentary videos is because it makes the rendering process a lot easier. If I used gameplay footage, I found it to be a bad idea to use video game footage, whether it's gameplay or a video game trailer, because unless that was the case where I would talk about gameplay or about a video game trailer, it wouldn't be relevant to the topic of the video. But to use still images can also serve as a consistent video format if I ever got around to making podcasts and interviews. So the rundown of this long video, yes, I will continue to make gaming videos. I hope to make more commentary videos because I understand commentary videos are seen as more interesting compared to a video with no one talking. For long video formats, that will involve others such as an interview. Fully, some artists are open to the idea and we can find a time to talk. My name is Dragon Actual and and thanks for watching. See you next time.